Sabbath dwellers, hello, it's time for Sunday School Bonanza, a podcast brought to you by This Week in Mormons. We are so happy to be here and give you gospel bo- doctrine, gospel doctrine, too many B's in this lesson, that's why I'm doing this, a gospel doctrine breakdown of, of wonderful quality. While too, many we guys, too many guys named Blake in this lesson. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm talking about. I'm joined, of course, by the, uh, the wonderful, wonderful Kurt Frankham, of course, from Leading LDS is with us. Everyone, welcome, Kurt. Wow, empty room here, but hey, I'm I am excited to be back. I Kurt, love me some Sunday school. I love having Kurt on. I like that Kurt and I have this this relationship with podcasting. We've never even met in person, but it's like we're simpatico. You know, it's great. It's true. I have a good time here. Well, uh, someday I mean, one Jeff will meet. Uh, Kurt, if you want to plug something real quick, I believe leading LDS at leadingLDS.com is now starting a podcast as well. Are you we know? have entered the podcast world, and I am more than excited and got my first official podcast launched last week and uh, we are going to be discussing the hard-hitting issues of leadership in the LDS church uh, and how to be a better leader and have some great guests on. We just did a, uh, a podcast about how to help individuals that are facing faith crises and awesome, awesome episode. Tune in, subscribe. Now I'm, I'm the one that's begging for the there we go. No, Never folks, used. listen to it. We love Kurt. Just uh, of course, once it's approved. But yeah, once the podcast yeah. is there, check it out. But go to leadinglds dot com. I'm sure you can find all subscription links and assorted. Uh, They're there. There, it's great. Well, good. I'm happy to hear that. This week's lesson, everybody. We're on lesson sixteen now. It's called "I Cannot Go Beyond the Will of the Lord," and I believe the main purpose of this lesson is to sort of stress the importance of obeying God exactly. And not kind of trying to contort God's will so that it fits with our own desires. That's what I took out. As it says in the end of the lesson, there's an expression of tugs and pulls of the world. And we'll find that Balaam, our main character, is very much affected by the tugs and pulls of the world. And Jeff, if you'll allow me to start with Go for uh, it. additional teaching ideas at the very end, there's a, a section called Obeying the Lord, and it references specific stories in the scriptures that have uh, they give good examples for example obviously the savior um says aware of the agony before him in gethsemane uh, and on the cross kneel down and prayed saying father if thou will remove this cup from me um talks about abraham obviously being faithful and sacrificing his son uh, mary was told that she'd be uh, be the mother of the son of god and responded faithfully. Then it refers to Nephi, I will go and do, sons of Helaman, and so forth. And and mm-hmm. this story is, it's a, it's a sad story about Balaam and, and his fall from a, a, a prophet and wanting, being a, a obedient prophet and really by the book and then slowly slipping because of the, the desires of his heart. Well, now you've spoiled the end, but that's okay. Oh, it's wow. fun. It's fine. It's like a movie trailer today. It just it's tells true. it too much. But uh, yeah, there's some great stuff in here. And we're dealing with two primary actors, a man named Balak and Balaam. And your reading, by the way, is in Numbers uh, 22, mostly just Numbers 22, but also Numbers 31 and some Numbers 25. But mostly if you're in 22, you're going to be fine. So uh, yeah, so Balak, for some reference, is the king of the Moabites. And up to this point, as we know, the Israelites have gone around with, through the hand of the Lord defeating people around them, all in their environs and everything, and really settling the land and taking it and, and thrashing their enemies, okay? So as you can imagine, Balak, the king of the, Moab- of the Moabites, is, you know, he's worried because there's no reason to assume the Israelites are not going to come storm Moab as well and just take things over. But he's smart enough because he realizes that he can't just go up against Israel. He knows that the Lord is on Israel's side. It's interesting because he's sort of a pagan, but he actually recognizes that God is with Israel. Right. That's what, that was an interesting part of this is why didn't he go to his own God or, you know, who he worships? He goes to the Israelite, Israelite prophet and, and their God. Which yeah, is- which is fascinating. And so so he's, he realizes the only real way to defeat them is to almost like turn God against them. He feels like, okay, I've either got to mess up the Israelites and make them unfaithful, which of course happens time and time again, or somehow make God change his mind and, and say, no, I'm done with Israel. I've changed my allegiance to Moab. Something along those lines. 
And that that's his game plan, which is ambitious, to say the very least. I think and, that's and practical. I mean, if he <laughs> if there's a god that has power, you might as well see if you can leverage there's, that. There's you know? much less overhead this way. I mean, it's much easier. <laughs> so, um, so Kurt, you know what what does he do? What is what's Balak's main approach here? Well, he he goes to Balaam and tries to uh, seduce him with much uh, wealth to get Balaam to curse the Israelites and Balaam says no way I'm I'm a awesome prophet and how dare you tempt me uh, to do much, such yeah. and then Balaam or uh, let's say I'm sorry uh, Balak who, uh, who comes back if with even more prestige bringing the heavy hitters in to say Balaam let's let's think about this think of the the uh, the wealth you could have and then Balaam says yeah you know what maybe Maybe I'll go pray about it. Maybe I'll think about it. And then begins the slippery slope. Yeah, because he asks again. He already knows what the Lord wants from this, but you can tell he's tempted by by all these worldly treasures, basically. And so he wants to see if God will let him get away with it, more or less. It's true. It's my understanding. And so and, uh, the oh, Lord tells him, uh, all right, why don't you go? But I'm going to be mad if you go. Yeah. And so... Balaam hops on his donkey and and soon has a Shrek experience of a okay, talking donkey. How, how do we reconcile that part, though, before? <laughs> the Lord basically says, yeah, okay, then go. And then once he goes, the Lord's all upset with him. I mean, I, any, you know, someone right. could could glance through that in scriptures and be like, well, what the heck? God told him to do something, and then he got angry with him for doing it. So Yeah, I, I guess it all goes back to the premise. Same with, uh, you know, Joseph Smith and the, the lost uh, translation. And I guess it yeah. refers to that. Um Oh, wait, no, it doesn't. I just read Joseph Smith's translation. No, I think there's a good point there, though. I see a lot of parallels to Martin Harris in yeah. this situation, for sure. And, and also just... And, uh, you know, the Lord will... We we ask for things, and it's almost like, you know, you can do it, but the consequences are still in place. Yeah. And uh, sad. Yeah, and I think this even goes along with a lot of Israel before. A lot of preceding lessons have talked about Israel, you know, often getting sort of impatient with the Lord testing them in the wilderness. Before during the Exodus, you know, whether they start murmuring, you know, they don't want just manna and stuff like that. And so often you see the Lord kind of saying, okay, fine, 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 fine. And uh, this is similar here. It's are, like they've learned you, nothing. Are you recording this in the Garden of Eden? It sounds like you're like in this paradise of birds. You don't hear the birds? Yeah, I hear the birds. I just have, <laughs> I, I live on the top level and there are, there's a tree and f- nature. It, it's, it brings a good feeling. I don't live on the edge I'm of happy. the great. You live on the edge of the Great Basin where trees only exist because man put them there. It's I true. live in a place where trees do spring forth on their own without well, anyone helping. They just show up. It's remarkable. Well, it sounds good. So on the way to Moab, um, Balaam's donkey stops. I love this whole this little episode right here. <laughs> so the donkey stops. It refuses to go forward. And the lesson really shortens this down. But I encourage everyone to really read verses 22 through 30 because I think they're fascinating personally. And uh, what you see here is the donkey is just like, it stops, an angel appears in this instance, and the donkey is freaked out. That's basically the first thing that happens. Because Balaam doesn't see it, right? Balaam doesn't see it. The donkey sees an angel before Balaam does, if that's any indication of where Balaam's mind (laughs) is at this point. And so the donkey sees it, freaks out, and kind of turns away, and then Balaam strikes the donkey and goes back. And then the angel stood again there, and so basically you have a back and forth with uh, the donkey freaking out about the angel, Balaam smacking the donkey a bunch of times and the donkey crushing Balaam's foot against the wall and it goes on like this and then the donkey eventually does speak and basically says hey why are you hitting me these three times <laughs> and Balaam says because you mocked me you mocked me and if I had a sword I would kill you and the donkey says unto Balaam basically am I not your donkey upon which you have ridden forever and blah 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 and he says no you're not my donkey anymore donkey <laughs> Try your best to Eddie Murphy voice in class when you read sure. the donkey's part. Oh, that's terrible. So um, <laughs> I I just think, um, I mean, what parallels do we see? The point of it, I love the one thing, he's not surprised by the talking donkey at all. Right. Well, it's just like, oh, you're talking to me, donkey. Well, yeah, I don't know if they left that forth. out, but what, where does the line of, oh my goodness, a talking donkey. Um, <laughs> it's just like, oh, great. Yeah, sure. But I, I think the, the parallel here in to, to real life, you know, when we make decisions that we know we probably shouldn't be making. And as you move forward with the decision, things just keep, I mean, there's no, it's never like a smooth process after making that decision of doing something, you know, she shouldn't do. And the Lord will continue 
to remind you this is not a good idea. You should turn back. Yeah, exactly. That's what this angel was trying to do, get it to turn back. And Balaam was so lost in whatever else that at least the donkey was receptive enough to be a vehicle to turn him around. But Balaam is so stubborn that he just he just presses on. And then, of course, you know, the angel gives way at some point, and that's that's just life. But eventually Balaam does, of course, see the uh, the angel. And he bows his head. He falls flat on his face, as it says in later verses. But uh, there's a lot to learn here because I, you see a lot of parallels with, you know, like it says in the lesson, simple, straightforward stuff they might ask you, like a child unhappy from an, with an answer from one parent asks another. How often have all of us done that? I mean, right. that's very – or a member of the church unsatisfied with counsel seeks it from another. That's happened all the time too, et cetera, et cetera. We d- or we, we decide and a, a commandment doesn't apply to us as it does to somebody else. Right. And so a lot of the time you'll find that, uh, you know, even if one person – goes to a different leader in the church or changes wards or goes to the stake president after the bishop said something, the leader may say something different and justify that. But uh, yeah, and that, yeah, that kind of, in the next part of the story is where you realize the Lord, regardless of what the intentions of their leaders may be, the Lord will always get his work done, even through imperfect prophets uh, or or prophets that have the wrong desire in, in heart because Israel is, is then blessed. through Bible. Absolutely. And so eventually Balaam uh, does arrive in Israel either way. And uh, Balak shows Balaam the riches and influences that await him for turning the Lord against Israel. He says, hey, if you can change God's mind about this, this is what awaits you. But at this point, Balaam, after the donkey and angel experience, he seems to be a bit clearer of mind, I would say. Right, right. Um, You know, I'm here, but that doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to curse the Israelites like you think. He refuses, yeah. Right. And Balak gets upset about this as well. He actually condemns Balaam many times. But we do see that Balaam is still at least entertaining Balak and following him around and having a back and forth as opposed to just walking away from the situation, which I think is what we should be doing in situations like this. Right. And, well, what happens after that? What do we need to learn here? Well, the – so the – let's see – Balaam then blesses the Israelites, and then as we, I don't know if we're skipping too fast, but we're skipping to um, later on, and when Balaam, the tables are turned, and then Balaam is the one coming up with the bad ideas of tempting the, uh, that they should tempt the Israelites, um, and then his heart is just set on glory, and it's no good. I think that's an interesting perspective. And it, yeah, you're in chapter 31 and stuff, especially yes. you, you read these verses like verse uh, throughout verse 16. Yeah. So he never asks the Lord to destroy Israel. It's like he's re- doing letter of the law kind of stuff here. Exactly. But he wanted those riches and influence so badly that so since he knew he could not actually curse Israel, like he instructs, you know, the Midianites and to tempt Israel into sin, which is a how easily does that happen? That, and I think that's a brilliant metaphor for our day that it's it's not out and out that we're going to have people cursing god directly god's going to turn on us they're going to try really hard to get us to turn on god in a roundabout way and then we do lose god's protection in that sense yeah you know as as balaam that turn of uh well i i can't i can't curse the israelites so maybe there's another way i can get this glory maybe there's a another roundabout way of of obtaining this and so hey here's an idea uh you know if, if we tempt and and then then the glory will be mine not not good and not good it, at all it, this leads us into uh, at the end there's a quote by elder bruce r mcconkey if yeah. you'll allow yeah. me jeff please go for it yeah says what a story this is here is a prophet of god who is firmly committed to declare only what the lord of heaven directs there does not seem to be the slightest doubt in his mind about the course he should pursue he represents the Lord, and neither a house full of gold and silver nor high honors offered by the king can sway him from his determined course. But greed for wealth and lust for honor beckon, on, beckon him. How marvelous it would be for him to be rich and powerful. Perhaps the Lord will let him compromise his standards and have some worldly prosperity and power. I wonder how often some of us get our direction from the church, and then, Balaam-like, plead for some worldly rewards. Balaam, inspired and 
and mighty as he once was, lost his soul in the end because he set his heart on the things of the of this world rather than the riches of eternity. And if I can, if I can bolster that with a quick quote from Brigham Young, Brigham Young said, "It's short." He said, "Say to the fields, flocks, herds, silver, goods, tenements, possessions, and to all the world, stand aside, get away from my thoughts, for I am going to worship the Lord." That's all. Perfect. I didn't mean to jump on your reading. I just thought they were complimentary. No, absolutely, and (laughs) it, it fit perfectly. And, you know, this is, we must constantly analyze where our heart is as opportunities arise, whether in, you know, secular opportunities or yeah. spiritual opportunities and say, why am I doing this and how will it build the kingdom of God through my efforts? And I think it's very good to take a step back and ask ourselves, like, why am I putting so much emphasis on some of this worldly glory or riches or power or whatever it may be? And it's hard to set those things aside because it, faith is required to have, you know, a good long view of what we're aiming for. But uh, I think it's always good to self-assess and revisit where we're at. Like, you know, am I really putting the riches, the promises of Balak ahead of of what could be uh, given me otherwise if I'm faithful and if I do what's right? It's true. Yeah. Be so, more like Nephi and Abraham. Oh, and sons yeah. Of Elaman. Oh, yeah. Enoch, even. We can keep naming prophets all day. Malachi. Oh, it's the scriptures are full of them. Thankfully, of them. there's more Nephi's than there are Balaam's in the scriptures. Well, Kurt, we thank you for help. I actually, I think this is a very useful and straightforward lesson, and I appreciate you taking the time to do it with us. I'm always happy to be here at the Sunday School Bonanza, and uh, hope I hope I can come back. Yeah, so make sure to visit Kurt to everybody at Leading LDS. You can also go to find him on Twitter and Facebook. He does all those things. So and soon iTunes. LDS. And soon iTunes. Fine. Is the podcast just going to be called Leading LDS? I mean, is yeah, I don't know. Right? I haven't thought of anything clever, but I figure <laughs> Leading LDS, that's, okay, so that works. Sounds good. Uh, folks, and we hope you'll uh, visit us, of course, at thisweekinmormons.com. Send us an email, contact at thisweekinmormons.com. And if you're not subscribed to this podcast, we certainly hope you will take the time to do that through whatever channel you so desire. We're available everywhere and on social media. So find us. And uh, Kurt, we wish you well. And everybody... Have a great Sunday. We'll talk to you soon. This has been Sunday School Bonanza, a This Week.